Hey, welcome back to JG3 Reviews. My name is James and I do fountain pen, ink, and paper reviews. And today we are going to look at the Waterman Emblem. This is a pen from a company with a well-established history. I mean, a rich history in the fountain pen world and a lot of ups and downs. It's also a pen that is in a price range where there is a lot of really good competition. It's kind of a hard place to be in that sub $50 price range. Just a lot of great pens can be had everywhere from, frankly, $2 all the way up to that $50 mark. So, is this pen any good? Does it write well? What do you think about the design? We're going to get into all of that as we look at the Waterman Emblem. Let's flip that camera and dive right in. All right, looking at this pen up close, I think it makes a good first impression. It's a classic design with good materials and good colors, and it just looks like it would be at home most places. Just a nicely done pen. Now, what sets it apart is mostly the cap. A lot of the other parts of this pen have been used in other pens like the Phileas and the Couture. Uh, the barrel here, for example, is interchangeable with those, and so is the grip section. And while styled differently, as we'll see in a second, so is the nib, but has a good stiff clip and very sturdy clip. It's not spring loaded, obviously, because it is integrated with that trim band. And I like that. Those kinds of clips usually work really well. And it's curved well here to easily go over a pocket. So I like the pen. I carry it fairly often. I do also like, besides the brushed stainless steel that looks great, the trim band here at the base of the cap. I think they've done a great job in how that looks with the Waterman name engraved and very tiny but very clear Paris at the bottom of that band and then France on the opposite side. I just think that looks quite good. Then you pop that cap and it is a snap cap, slip on snap cap with a good authoritative snick I think. It posts mostly well and securely. Now every now and then fairly deep as well. Every now and then I find that because of where my hand hits, see right at that trim band, that every now and then as you're writing, that movement will knock that loose. So I find that it's better to write with it unposted. And then it's actually, even though it has a metal insert here, a fairly light pen, but a very comfortable pen. And I like that ergonomics are quite good. Then you'll notice that this is that same black plastic grip section that was on the Phileas. That is an interchangeable part, and it makes sense that they would use those parts elsewhere. A little simple silver trim band also looks quite familiar as well. And then a different nib, or at least different engraving on the nib. Instead of that Art Deco design, what we have here is a very simple stainless steel nib with an engraving of the Eiffel Tower and Waterman Paris again, and find their designating which tip you have. Flip it over and you have the very familiar Waterman feed. Open it up, and I don't have a converter in here, although I usually do, but this is, of course, all plastic. Pin with, again, a metal insert. And it doesn't make the pin heavy, it just gives it a little bit better balance. It's still a very light section and uh, not a heavy pin or imbalanced pin. Now, because of that brass insert, some converters will not fit. It does take international standard cartridges, long cartridges, converters, uh, but some converters don't fit. There's just something about that and some will. So you'll just have to look and see what of your international standard converters will fit in there. I believe a Schmidt will, obviously a Waterman will, but they cost a little bit more. And so some don't want to use those. And I understand that. So let's get out some other pins and do a size comparison. All right, for size comparison, you have, of course, the Phileas is right here, and then you have the Waterman Emblem, which has an identical barrel in terms of shape, size, and dimension, but you'll notice a much longer cap. And then you have the Majan M600, the Platinum Plaisir, the Jinhao 100, and then at this end, a Pen BBS 456, looking quite large next to these others, a Platinum 3776, and the Coveco Student. And here are the pins posted, exaggerating the difference in the lengths of these pins. And here are the pins unposted. All right, still on a Waterman kick, aren't we? And 
this is, I believe, Serenity Blue. And this pin, like the other Waterman's, has a really nice fine line. And a little bit thinner, just slightly thinner than my graduate or the, uh, the Allure I've tested. But it writes well. Fairly dry. Now it did just do the thing. I'm just gonna unpost it. Every now and then that starts to slip when I write. And of course that will vary with pen and person, but that kind of drives me a little nuts sometimes. Other than that, enjoyable pen. Pretty nice writing pen. Now this one, I will say, not quite as smooth as that Graduate or the Allure. Maybe I even already said that, and certainly not as smooth as that Medium Phileas. That was excellent. But we're gonna put it through the crazy test here anyway. I know that this skip, where was it, right here? That was me, I lifted just to move my hand over. So I don't think there were any skips from the pen itself. You will notice this is just a bit of a finer fine than the other fine Waterman's that I've tested, but I think it does write a pretty nice line, don't you? So, pretty nice pen. I will say that this is a really competitive price zone and it doesn't bring to the table anything innovative and neither do some of those other pens either i have to say it's kind of one of the the there are a lot of 50 dollars pens 40 to 50 dollars pens and probably nobody rocks that arena quite like pen bbs and uh, some offerings even now from like uh, Hong Dian and Mahjan, but among the Western pen makers, uh, a lot of them are bland, frankly. A lot of them are bland in that price range, which is really weird because you're paying more than for some of their pens that are fun and exciting and really kind of innovative. So I don't know what it is about that price range, but it does seem to be a common issue. I don't get it, but there it is. Anyway, do I like the pen? Yeah, on substance, I like the pen. You know, it does have a few of those flaws. The cap sometimes doesn't post as securely as I would like. For some of you, that won't even matter. You don't even post your pens. Uh, and I just think, in general, is it overpriced? Well, yeah, it is. I really like the quality of the cap. Uh, I think that's really nicely done, but uh, yeah. It's just a lot of really stiff competition. So that's really probably the Waterman's biggest hurdle in this price range. But it is a good looking pen and I do like it. And I do like to write with it. It's just that, you know, if it weren't for my curiosity of Waterman and where they are now, that is what led me to buy this pen, I probably wouldn't have bought this pen. And it wouldn't be top of the list for me to suggest either. So I don't dislike it. I just don't have it way up there in my highly recommended list. But if you like it and you like the style and that's within your budget and you feel fine about that, yeah, great pen and the Eiffel Tower on the nib is kind of fun. All right, like, share, subscribe, and more importantly, I hope that you enjoy your pens, enjoy your week. God bless.